there was this memo that leaked from Google. Here, I'll just read a little bit of the note. The uncomfortable truth is we aren't positioned to win this arms race and neither is open AI. And what this memo author is saying is that Google's competitor is not really open AI or any other firm, but actually open source models. Meta's training data, I guess, leaked out and open source engineers have been uh, creating AIs on that data that seem to, at least according to this author, uh, be catching up to what OpenAI and Google are doing. He says they're doing things with $100 and 13 billion parameters that we struggle with at 10 million and 540 billion. How much credence do you give that, that you know, the open source movement is gonna kind of catch up or maybe even lap the big centralized firms? The open source uh, and the world at large uh, has been working on has been working from the from the kind of biggest uh, open source available uh, pre-trained system that uh, I think for a while and perhaps still it was the Facebook uh, Llama that they trained and in my opinion like completely responsibly just dumped on the world. Uh, so uh, so like the open source certainly currently does not have the ability to throw like hundreds of millions of dollars or again, soon to be billions, billions at these large uh, AI summoning experiments. When Robin said that uh, like he would be worried if people would be deliberately uh, try to create like worst, uh, worst case scenarios, make AI to do uh, destroy the world deliberately. Well, open source. Uh, that's how, like if you, it's not hard to find or the existing projects uh, that try to use uh, open uh, source uh, AIs. Uh, to maximize the damage. I mean, that the AIs aren't that, competi co co that competent yet. Uh, so they kind of like a more sort of fun and games uh, project at this point, but this is just like uh, early uh, 2023. But how, how would you even regulate open source development of these products? I mean, that, that kind of seems to undercut the entire idea of there's even much you could do about it. Yeah, so like I, I mean, we already have uh, you know, penalties uh, for developing viruses and stuff like that. So it's it's uh, like uh, something probably could be uh, developed. Some kind of liability uh, can be assigned uh, from there. But I, but I I agree, this is like super super much more hard, harder than just like making sure that we are not going to summon even even more competent minds and and release them uh, on the public. Mm -hmm. So here's a another compromise solution. Mm -hmm. I know people who work on secure operating systems who say that you can provably uh, show that some operating systems are completely secure and maybe you could just require they use those operating systems for the uh, 200 lines of code here. That would be a relatively low cost, honestly, and it would actually mm -hmm. help kickstart the secure operating system world. And that seems like a reasonable regulation that would be relatively low cost, uh, addresses your most direct concern here. Uh, again, I'm looking for compromises. I'm looking for yep. things we can agree on. Yep, like 100% agreed. But really importantly, the companies are currently racing and they're not right. motivated to take any of those steps. The what? danger here is if we empower some regulatory body to do stuff, it won't just want to do a few best things. It'll have a big public behind it and they want to you know, take make speeches and show how concerned they are and just do a lot of extra too much stuff. So uh, we want... Maybe to, even if we authorize some regulation to make it limited, and that's part of the problem here. The re regulation isn't often limited. What are your major concerns with what non-careful regulation might do in terms of our, the development of this technology? Well, humanity in the last century uh, basically shut down nuclear energy industry <laughs> pretty effectively. And we basically said, no, we didn't want to go there with modest exceptions. Hmm. Uh, more recently, we basically shut down genetic engineering and said, no, we didn't want to go there. Uh, we may just see AI that way and want to shut it down. That is, I, I, some people say that this, we really couldn't regulate this. That would be infeasible. There's it's too spread out and too, too many strong interests. Looking at the past, I'd say it, it is possible to strongly regulate some industries and there is strong public opinion 
uh, in support of being wary of AI and, and holding it back. So I fear the worst case of really just shutting down the whole industry and really foregoing enormous potential. If the government and various regulators around the world fail to crush uh, AI in its infancy, what is what are the prospects about an AI future, an AI dominated future, let's say that most excite you? Well, so over the last few decades, we've seen many new exciting technologies appear. Compared to those, this is more exciting because it seems to have more potential, but it's also in some sense more democratic. That is, most of the people figuring out what this can do are just people trying it themselves. They don't need to get a big startup and lots of funding. They just start using this in their ordinary business life and see what can happen. And that's really exciting because if a lot of them find a lot of useful applications, we're just going to get this big wave of productivity where a lot of people figure out a lot of ways to do things better. <laughs> and that will not only make us all richer and healthier, but it will make more of a sense that we should be expecting and wanting innovation and change and technology to spread and more of an optimism that the future could be better because of that and more of a, a an eagerness to maybe instead of looking for all the things that could go wrong and trying to fix them, that we should be looking for all the things that could go right and how to encourage them. And that sounds like an exciting future over the next decade is the world gets more optimistic and excited because great stuff is happening and they're more interested in pursuing new options than in closing them off and then complaining about why things aren't better. Hey, thanks for watching that excerpt from our live stream with Robin Hansen and Jan Tallinn about artificial intelligence, existential risk, and the dangers of preemptive regulation. You can watch our full conversation right here or another excerpt right here.